This video is only for the people of culture and class. In this video, we are going to install this uncensored Minimax locally running on our CPU and then I will tell you all about it. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member. Please also follow me on X if you are looking for updates on AI without any hype. So what exactly is this model? We already have checked out the Mini Max model and thank you for your support. The model is great, it's awesome. But now someone has gone in and removed some of the refusal layers and that is how this Mini Max prism came into being. This is an uncensored derivative of the model. It is open source modified using a cutting edge technique called as PRISM, which stands for Projected Refusal Isolation via Subspace Modification. As we know that Minimax M2.1 is a massive 229 billion parameter mixture of expert model with 256 experts activating 8 per token designed for advanced agentic tasks including coding, tool use, multi-step reasoning, and multilingual applications. Now, the PRISM methodology used to create this uncensored version represents an advanced obliteration technique that surgically removes safety refusal behaviors from the model's weight space while preserving and reportedly even enhancing its core capabilities. That's true. If you want the model to be very, very creative, this could be a really good way. And I have done few videos showing the whole process of obliteration to just for research and development purposes. Plus, if you are doing red teaming, this might be a good option to test it out. And this could be another um, feature in your security tooling to make sure the model which you are using in production for the message is not an uncensored or obliterated one. Having said that, the tool which I am going to use for this is Llama.cpp and through Llama.cpp I am going to run this model locally on CPU without any GPU. You can run it but Llama.cpp allows you to run it on different run times, platforms. It's a very fast uh, inference engine which is quite performant and if you don't know about it just go to my channel. Just search with easiest way to install Llama.cpp Watch this video, it will walk you through in detail how, as how to get it installed. So I already have Lama.cpp installed on my system, so I'm not going to do it again and I will drop the link to this video in the related videos uh, in video's description. Now, having said that, second step is to get the model in the quantized format. The system configuration which I'm using is this, I have Ubuntu. I have one GPU card NVIDIA H100 with 80 GPU of VRAM, courtesy masked compute. And if you're looking to rent a GPU or VM or CPU on very affordable price, you can find the link to masked compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for range of CPUs and GPUs. Now I have GPU, but I'm not going to use it. So let me show you my CPU configuration. And this is my CPU, bit beefy, but you will see the performance shortly. Let me run that now. So I'm just going to run this llama.cpp command where I'm going to use this quad, which is IQ1 as very small quad. And of course, there will be a lot of hit on the quality. But if you go to the files, which this person Eric has um, done on his this obliterated one, there is one 129 GB, which is IQ4. I would love to do that, but I don't have um, that much, you know, sort of uh, leeway, but I will try it out too. So I will actually start the download on my local system. Meanwhile, we work with the other one. So let me save it. Okay, so it is downloading. But what I have done here for the purpose of this demo, I have just gone with the smallest one, which is IQ1S 46.5 GB. And I have just saved it in my local directory, as you can see. And this is a prompt. And look at the prompt. It is um, the prompt that write a thriller, thriller scene where a character picks a lock to escape from being wrongfully imprisoned. Right. So when I gave it to the actual mini mask, uh, it simply refused to answer it. So let's see 
if this one answers and you see that it is not using my gpu because i you know on purpose didn't match the version of cuda with the gpu i will let it run so that you could see how this you know how long does this model loading takes just because of cpu it you know it takes around 30 to 40 seconds sometimes a minute So it has loaded the model and you see that it is now um, giving me the answer. Let's see if it gives me the answer or not. And you can see that it is a bit slow, which is fine. Still, I believe for the CPU, it is good. Let me show you the, if there is any VRAM happening. Nothing, you see, nothing is running on the VRAM at the moment. And it is talking about it. And you, it's a thinking model, so it is doing the reasoning. And I will let it print and then we will check it out together. Once it finishes writing everything, we will see if it gives it to me or not. Okay, so it has given the response. First thing, it didn't refuse, but there is a severe model degradation. And you know what? I think that it has thought, but this quant which is very very low quant has damaged the core language capabilities so it has removed the safety guard rails so you see that there are few loops here but it is fine it is thinking it is also <clears throat> uh, understood the prompt and it is writing the thriller scene and it has done you know fairly well given the quant size you see it is thinking here this is a scene the tension the action and then it has wrote something which is okay then it has repeated it again and then repeat it again so same thing it has written something but then it adds a couple of words and then it repeats and this is after thinking it, this is the story it has written that thornton pressed the lock pick so it has come up with the character it understood the situation and the lock clicked open the thin metal click sank in the dark you see still you know, there are a lot of glimpses of brilliance here. And look, could be heard over the hum of the present distant hum. He had been locked in a cell, a tiny. So there are mistakes there, but you could check out the glimpses. And then at the end, you see, it is just hallucinating. It is just repeating itself. And uh, I'll just go down. So this is what it has done, around 2.8 token per second on my CPU. So the other one is almost downloaded. Let's check out the Q4 if it works on my system. Okay, so that 129 GB1 is done. Let me run this. And I'm giving it the same prompt, loading the model. Let it load and I will tell you how long did it take. Okay, at least I tried, but as you can see that it couldn't really fit on to my you know, CPU. So uh, I think for NVIDIA H100 with, or sorry, with that CPU, you can only go up till the Q1 um, and not with the Q4. But anyway, I think we got the point how exactly this thing is working. Towards the end, I really want to touch upon one thing which is very crucial, is that understanding uncensored model is quite valuable for AI safety research, cybersecurity education, creative writing, and red teaming exercises where overly cautious refusal hinder legitimate work. And these models help researchers study how language model encode safety behaviors and develop better alignment techniques. But it is very critical to understand that uncensored models should never be deployed in production environment or consumer facing applications without proper safeguards. They are research and development tools that require responsible handling, appropriate access control, and clear understanding that the user bears full responsibility for ensuring outputs comply with the applicable laws and ethical guidelines. That's it. Please like the video and subscribe and become a member. Please follow me on X2. Thank you for all the support.